You're listening to the Beauty on Purpose podcast. I'm your host, Genevieve santos Ben, and I'm obsessed with all things beauty and business and helping you navigate the ups and downs of being an esthetician. I've been in the beauty industry for 17 years, and I'm committed to showing you how to find your purpose in this crazy industry. So let's get started. This episode is brought to you by 360 Beauty Maven Consulting, the premier training and consulting company geared towards helping beauty professionals increase their income and make a difference in the industry. Join me for my free masterclass from zero to zen, five essentials you need to start your aesthetics biz from scratch. I'm having it this coming Tuesday, September 26 at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Sunday, October 1st, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can check out the show notes for more information and to register for free. Thanks for tuning in. This is a podcast episode that is taken from my Instagram live. If you don't follow me, it is at 360beautymaven. And every Tuesday and Wednesday, I go on Instagram live, first on Tuesdays to provide live coaching for estheticians, as well as give my own teaching from my expertise and Wednesdays I go on I go on Instagram live with a beauty expert esthetician or makeup artist in the industry so thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoy this recording Hello everyone, this is Genevieve, the 360 Beauty Maven. I love talking all things beauty, business, and aesthetics. I am on here because today because um, I am not available to talk tomorrow. So um, I wanted to come on here to do some live coaching. If If you're tuning in and you have any questions about being a spa owner or your business or even your career, if you don't work for yourself, I'm more than happy to provide any inspiration or advice to you. All right. So if you want, you can just type in the chat um, what your question is. But if you don't have any questions, just type in the chat where you're where you're tuning in from. Uh, I love hearing from, you know, people all over the country. And it's just such a pleasure to be of service to you all. Um, So if I don't see anybody on here, um, let's just get into some teachings. So I wanted, I titled this live, you know, what do you need to start an aesthetics business? So this is just a continuation of my series about how to start and run your own aesthetics business. Um, So with that, I just wanted to talk about what are some three things that you could start off with in terms of starting your aesthetics business from scratch. Um, So if, well, oh, before I even get into that, um, I'm just really excited to be here. Um, I I just, I like to do like a recap and an announcement. Sorry, I'm like, let me look at my calendar. My calendar, I know, is bananas. I'm like ridiculous here. This is my calendar. I pretty much schedule every hour on the hour, maybe with the exception of sleeping and napping and having lunch. So let me just look at my, um, I had the opportunity to, to visit my best friend's documentary screening. I actually worked the event for her. Um, anytime she has an event, I just love being in service to her and her mission. So um, her name is Stephanie Floor, and her the name of her documentary is uh, Beauty Rituals. 
um, NYC, I think, I don't know. I don't know the name of it, but um, all I know is that she has been filming a documentary series of beauty destinations in New York City. So she's she's done several episodes so far. And Thursday was the day that she did a preview screening. And oh my gosh, the pe- the amount of people that showed up for her was incredible. She does everything first class, you know, um, even though it takes a lot of hard work. Um, it just meant so much to me to be able to be of service to the cause of spreading uh, beauty traditions from all over the world and all over New York City. So it was just a really great event. I had such a good time. It was so nice catching up with some old friends, um, especially those that are in the freelance makeup artist industry. Um, shout out to Julie, who, you know, like Julie Candle, she's like killing it in the nail game. She just wrapped up Fashion Week. Um, I saw Etzel. I saw Adriana, uh, Joy, like all these great people, like. It, it just felt so good to be in the room full of positivity and just overall support for Stephanie's mission. So that totally, you know, inspired, inspires me to continue doing what I do for estheticians and creating this dream that I have of launching an online course. Um, I've been talking about it for definitely more than a year because it's just, it's just so much work so much work like it's just a lot of work and so um the online course is called the solo aesthetics blueprint i am launching a free master class next week um which i will get into after my teaching because i really want to provide some value to you all today um, in terms of like my advice and, you know, uh, leading up to the master class coming up next week. So, you know, if you have any questions again on starting your own aesthetics business, feel free to drop it in the chat or you can send me a DM if you're listening to the recording on the beauty on purpose podcast. Um, what else? So yeah, I guess let's just get started. So, um, so first off, the, the three things that you need to start your own aesthetics business. Well, first off, you need to have a physical foundation. So the physical foundation starts off with a, a location. So if you're going to be a mobile esthetician, you know, are you going to host pop-up spas at like an Airbnb or a hotel room? Um, are you going to, what else? Um, or if you want to get a salon suite, you can go to Phoenix salon suite, Sola or, um, salons by JC, which I'm in right now in Westbury. So think about what your physical foundation is going to consist of. You know, um, you also have to think about what equipment do you need Please do not get any fancy equipment in the beginning of your journey as an aesthetics solopreneur because it is just not, just don't get any fancy equipment. Let your hands do the talking for your clients. So I highly recommend getting a steamer, you know, like the basics, just get a steamer, get maybe like, um, a ultrasonic spatula or the BT micro. Um, another piece of equipment you can get for cheap, maybe, you know, like a handheld LED, LED, um, device. Um, you know, so like I use my skin buddy, which is a handheld light therapy device, which has ultrasonic as well, or it vibrates. Um, so it just, just like, keep it simple because like I said, people are not coming to you because of your fancy machines. People are coming to you because they know, like, and trust you. Hey, Giselle. All right. Um, 
hold on oh gosh okay so for my online course i have a few people working with me on this and so i am just multitasking at its finest so hold on i just have to do this really quickly i have to send a code to my integrator oh thanks giselle supportive i love it okay so you have different options to to have your spa so like i said if you are mobile you don't have a location but you want to do like a pop-up and you have like five people that want to come in for a facial rent a hotel room you know like just you don't even need to tell them anything. I mean, if you're doing an Airbnb, that's different because, like, you have to tell them what it's for. And, um, you know, like, I, I would recommend just going for a nice hotel room, you know, get, like, a king-size bed or maybe, and then just, I don't know, like, a suite, get a suite maybe so that you can put your 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 massage table in the middle of the room and go to town. I think that's a great, you know, like way to do it. Um, what else? Are you stuck on how to get your aesthetics business started? Have no fear. I've come out with a new resource, the Esthetician Biz Cheat Sheet. This is a checklist of all the items you need to start your own aesthetics practice. Enter in your email at 360beautymaven.ck.page and get your free cheat sheet today. So here, oh, also you should have your insurance policy. So please, please get an insurance policy. You know, my friend, my, my esthetician friend just sent me a picture of a facial. It was actually a chemical peel and dermaplane or a dermaplane and a chemical peel that she did on a client and she ended up getting really bad post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and she had to go to the hospital or she had to go to urgent care to get looked at and this esthetician did not have insurance i was like how are you gonna do chemical peels and do on do it on a client that like you don't even have an insurance policy for so that was crazy and so um you know i just like just get a go through ascp the association for skincare professionals they have like it's like 250 for the year which is the great a great value i know uh giselle says disaster so then, um, yeah, I just, I just recommend getting an insurance policy to start. Cause then also you can't get your business licenses unless you have an insurance policy on file. So definitely get that in place. Um, let's see what else I have my notes in front of me on my computer. Um, so venue, equipment, products, have your product line ready. So if you are like me in the beginning, I got a lot of gratis from spa companies and, you know, like I actually started off with image, um, skincare, which is a great line. Um, they were sold in my school and so I was familiar with the brand. So naturally I gravitated towards that. And, um, so you should definitely have, um, a product line that you want to use, but instead of buying, um, back bar sizes for, for your back bar, get retail sizes. Your cost per use might be a little higher, but it's going to save you in the long run because you're gonna, you know, if you end up buying like five back bar cleansers, five exfoliants like you're gonna have so much product that's gonna go to waste because there's an expiration to a date to those products so it's really important to start small even if you're using samples for your back bar because that that's gonna tell you and then you know let the client dictate what you're going to use meaning 
you know, like based on what your, you know, this, the facial that you do, that you sell most of or whatever or like the skin type that you have a lot of the times use that and purchase that back bar so like when you have your retail products to start out with whatever products you run out of first then buy the back bar but don't you know don't do that when you first start out so Giselle says so true that was a mistake I made when I started purchased three thousand dollars in back bar and most of it expired before I got to use it See, I still would have used it anyway. <laughs> Three thousand dollars that's so much. So like when I first started, I actually had a thousand dollar minimum opening order. So I did five hundred retail and I did five hundred back bar. Um I had so much gratis from like Dermalogica and image from when I was teaching at the school. So like I didn't need too much for my back bar. So in my course, um, I actually go over the products that you need for your back bar. Oh, uh, Giselle says that's awesome. So I read off like comments because of the podcast. Um, so anyway, uh, so you should have your product line. And if you plan on being mobile, you know, have a nice suitcase for, for your products or a little caddy that you can carry for your gigs or for your clients. Um, what else? So here we are, we have your business foundation. So the, that's the second part. So the first part is, you know, your physical foundation, you should have a venue equipment and products. And the second one is your business foundation. So that's your business license, your insurance policy, which I know I, I mentioned in the first bullet. Um, but yeah, that, that should be like the first thing you get, which is your insurance policy, um, any, your LLC. So I recommend to all my clients that they should get an LLC to protect themselves because that's the best way to start off being self-employed. You can do a sole proprietorship, but understand that if anything happens to a client and they want to sue you, they can go after your personal, um, your personal assets. So like your, my ring, my house, my car, they can go after that. But if you have an LLC, it's the the business is its own entity. So you'll be able to, um, you'll be able, uh, to have more protection that way. So if you have an LLC, drop a one in the chat, you know, because LLCs are the way to go. And the more money that you make in your business, then you can switch to an S Corp or a C Corp. So that is something, th those are more advanced terms. Um, I would recommend going to an accountant or a CPA to get professional advice for, for that. So, um, yes. Oh, so much. Oh, I don't know what you meant by so much, but yeah. Thank you for the comment, Luigi. Okay. So, uh, the, what other business stuff you need? Okay. You need an EIN number. That's an employer identification number. Don't get it twisted. Don't pay to get an EIN. You can get an EIN for free on the IRS website. Just Google it. Um, biz oh, you have to have your business account set up. So please do not make a rookie mistake and mix up your personal and your business expenses. So do not use a personal, your personal checking account to pay for business expenses or a personal credit card. You should always ev have everything be under a business, um, account or a business credit card. So that's really important to do. So um, I'm just going over the three things you need to start your aesthetics business from scratch. The first one is your physical foundation. And the second is your business foundation, which is, which is what I'm going over right now. Um, oh, no. oh, so you can also read the book Profit First. Profit First was a game changer for my business. I never read a book so quickly over a weekend because I, I usually take my time with books. 
And Profit First was like the book that helped me to organize my finances properly. Uh, Think of the envelope method. So let's say when you get paid, you put like cash in like different envelopes, like your rent, your expenses, your, your tax bill. So, um, yeah, like I recommend going through profit first to manage your cash flow. Um, Luigi asks, which bank do you recommend for an account? Honestly, I use credit unions because you can open multiple business accounts for free and in some cases they will allow you to open up a business account for free so Luji what I would recommend for you is to google any credit unions that are near your job or near your house because um you know like for me personally me I you I bank with Jovia um they're a not very well like they're like a really small bank But their building is literally like a block away from my spa. So anytime I have to do like cash deposits, um, I, 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 I easily have just go drive over there in like five minutes and I drop it in the ATM. So you want to look for a credit union that's near you because like it's going to be annoying to, um, it's going to be annoying to find a bank that works and then you're going to, you're going to end up opening up at Chase or Bank of America and they're going to charge you per month. So, um, I recommend going through a credit union. So perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, what else? I know I keep on saying what else. Cause I, huh, I didn't know that I was going to go on live today. I thought I was going to have time tomorrow, but I really don't. I have a really tight schedule tomorrow. So, um, which I'll share on my Instagram stories. Uh, there, so profit first, please get that book, especially if you haven't started your business yet. Uh, so then that's, and then also another, uh, another thing you should have for your business foundation is your irresistible offer. So think about what type of facials you want to provide and think of, um, think of like, what's going to get your clients through the door? Like, is, is it an, an hour long facial with microdermabrasion, a jelly mask, dermaplane, dermaplaning? I rec, I don't recommend doing dermaplaning for the first treatment, but microderm is fine. I, I have personal experience doing that. Uh, but yeah, like see what you can do to, uh, see what you can do to make it like irresistible for, you know, like your clients would be crazy to pass up this deal, but do not discount, you know, do not go under your minimum facial. So let's say your facial start at like $95. Do not go under 95. You can go a little bit over in terms of value. So like maybe like price it at 95 and then your your facial like add-ons can add up to like 125. So the value is 125, but they're getting it for $95. So you really want to stress the value of your um of your irresistible offer. So you need an irresistible offer, you need your your business venue, your equipment, your products. And you need your EIN, your business license, your insurance policy. That's important. And now the last part is your clients. You need clients to start any business. So um, you need people that are ready and willing to pay for, for your services or else you have a hobby business. So if you work for somebody, I do not recommend poaching your clients from your workplace because karma is a bitch. You can really get in trouble with the universe that way. So I do not recommend trying to take your clients from the place of business that that is giving you willful employment, will, you know, um, gainful employment. Um, you have to like start from scratch. So if you want, you can start off with your friends and family. 
Uh, Luji says the hardest part. Yes, client getting clients is the hardest part, but it doesn't. It can be, you know, like you can be creative in the different ways you get clients. So, so for example, you can do Facebook ads. You can do um, you can do Instagram ads. You can post in Facebook groups, provided that you are in compliance with their policies. Um, then you can also just send an email out to all of your contacts or, and post on social media, post it on, you know, and then hopefully your place of employment doesn't follow you on Instagram or Facebook, or you can block them. So they don't know what your, you know, and, and, and oh, also, yes, partnership. Blue G says partnership. Um, partnerships are great. So like you can partner up with a company or a small business owner that serves the clients that you, you target as well. And you can offer to promote each other. Uh, I actually have a sweet mate at my, at my spa who has, um, uh, I, I have a sweet mate who, um, she does. She does hair. She does extensions, highlights, color, cut, everything. And I, um, I asked her it, for some business cards because I have a lot of Filipino clients. And literally, like, all I did was just tell my clients, like, oh, my God, I have a Filipino sweet mate. She does hair. I have a Filipino hairstylist. And I just gave it to all of my Filipino clients. I can give it to, like, non-Filipino clients, but I just figured, you know, like, the selling point is, hey, you know, support our people, right? And so um, it just felt really good to give her a card because, like, you know, anytime... I love using Gloss Genius. I use it every day in my beauty business. It's my booking system, credit card processor, and client relationship management platform all in one. I even get a website for online booking. I use it to manage my inventory, client list, and can even send emails and text notifications. They have the lowest credit card processing fee at 2.6% regardless of how you key in the card. The biggest reason why I started with them. Use my code Genevieve S number one, G-E-N-E-V-I-E-V-E-S number one to get a free trial and then get free processing on $1,000 worth of payments once you activate. That's over 25% saved in credit card fees. Or you can type in app, app.glossgenius.com forward slash invite forward slash Genevieve S number one. I, I love being the connector for my clients and anybody in general. And so, um, and so uh, I was able to get her some business and I'm hoping that she rewards me with uh, some color. <laughs> I need to get my roots done, but we're going to exchange services. So, you know, like that's a great way to build partnerships with your um, cl for future clients or prospective clients. You can also do like exhibit tables so like let's say your your local neighborhood is having like a fair or a health fair or something like that you can offer to to have a table or um you can offer to do like cheap services or discounted services for the people that attend so there's just so many different ways to market yourself so, um, but I, I would recommend starting off with your friends and family because like, that's going to be the, how, how do you say it? It's going to be like the fire that ignites you in the beginning. Will your friends and family stay with you long-term? Maybe that'll be great if they do. But the thing is that sometimes with that friendship comes familiar, familiarity where they're going to be like, when you want them to rebook, they're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to just tell you when I'm ready. Oh, I'll just hit you up when I'm ready to come back. Cause that's what happens to me a lot. 
So I, I'm very grateful for the clients that are my friends first that come to my business, but I don't rely on them for rebooks. Um, but it, you know, I do value the, you know, the fact that they are, um, supporting my business and it's giving me the seed funding to continue my business operations. So that's really where, what you have to look at it. You need to look at it from that perspective. Uh, so yeah, that is your clients. Um, another thing you should do, you should set a date for your grand opening. So if you are in a salon suite, you should have like an open house where you have people come in and just like take a look at your spa and, you know, just like totally, um, you know, just come, come in. Maybe you can give them a free gift for attending and that is going to be like your way of letting your family and friends know that you're in business for yourself. And I recommend, you know, putting up at least once a week a promotional post, you know, plugging in your business. Or if you don't want to be promotional, 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 you can you can start sharing skincare advice um, just like I do here. You know, even though, even if like there's no coaching, I want to give some added value once a week on my Instagram live for you all. So that is, that is literally like everything I wanted to train on. So, um, you know, so that just to recap the three things you need to start your aesthetics business from scratch. The first thing is your physical foundation. So your, your venue, your um, your, oh, where did I just put your products, your equipment. And then the second thing is your business foundation, your insurance policy, your EIN, your, um, your business licenses, anything that you need to be recognized in your state for your business. And then the, and your irresistible offer that's important to have and your business bank accounts. And then the last one is your clients set a date for a grand opening or an open house so that you can start to promote your business to your clients. It, like people find it easier to promote an event versus like, Hey, I'm in business for myself. Come support me as opposed to just being like, Hey, what are you doing on this date? Come through. You know, and if they can't come through, you want to downsell them like, hey, you know, even if you can't come, you know, you, you are more than happy to book an appointment with me or purchase a gift card for any loved ones or for yourself. So that's something to think about. Uh, hey, Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth, she's up to some really great things. Uh, they have an online course that's debuting as well. So check out her profile. I don't know, like, I mean, okay. So I, if you liked what I had to share on this IG Live, you know, especially when it comes to starting your aesthetics business from scratch, I am presenting a free masterclass next Tuesday, um, September 26th at 12 p.m., this is not going to be held on IG Live. This is actually going to be a Zoom webinar where they, um, where I will be going over the five essentials that you need to start your own aesthetics business from scratch. So that is really, uh, if you're, if you want more from what I just based on what I shared with you today definitely need to tune in to the master class and if you cannot make the master class live even though I recommend that you do because like things get so busy I, I really make an effort to attend webinars live because I know that I'm not going to watch the replay or you know like the excitement is going to die down so I'm not going to and I'm going to forget to watch the replay so the replay will be available, but it's only going to be available for a week or so, you know, because um, the doors will be opening for my online course, which is called the Solo Aesthetics Blueprint. And that is a paid course, which you'll get more information on next week. Um, so I hope you're able to make it for 
the master class it's free you get to um you know learn more about what you need to do to start your own aesthetics business from scratch or if you haven't if you started but you kind of did it like messy you know like this is your opportunity to clean up oh, elizabeth says sounds awesome oh thank you so much girl i told you you know it's enough that i i dm you at like midnight when i'm working so that's what I do. Like I DM people late at night because I can't, you know, like sometimes like I need a break from the computer screen. I need a break from like being in a flow state of like creating because right now, like I'm creating this. Uh, I'm uh, working on my slides for the webinar. I'm perfecting them. So I'm just really excited for everyone to tune in to the master class next Tuesday. It's free. The link is in my bio to register, so please check it out. Um, I might even make a tiny URL for it just so that it's easy for people to um, to connect to the website. But yeah, so um, a few more announcements. In addition to my webinar, um, I have an IECSC class in Florida coming up. It's called The Secrets to... The Secrets to Keeping Your Clients Without Dancing Online. Um, I have a meetup coming up. It's going to be cocktails in the, uh, in the courtyard uh, after the day one of the IECSC. And then the New York City Aesthetics Meetup is coming up next month. I am confirming a venue and I should have the event flyer by the end of this week to promote. But in the meantime, you should RSVP for our Florida meetup on um, October 15th. I need to put the link in the bio. <laughs> so many links. So, um, yeah, there's just so much that, you know, like I'm working on. And, yeah, like I just cannot wait to like, I don't even want to say that I want to get it over with because like this is all really exciting things. Um, I want to be in the moment. I want to be present. I want to be, you know, like enjoying this process of empowering other estheticians in their business. So with that, I am done. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will have all the announcements in the course in this replay. And so check out the timeline or check out the Beauty on Purpose podcast. Take care. You just finished another episode of the Beauty on Purpose podcast. Follow us on Instagram at 360 Beauty Maven and check out the show notes for more info on this episode. And while you're at it, would you mind leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts? Until then, we'll hear you on the next episode.